Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Chef and Meatballs from the Code Chef December 2018 Long Challenge. The problem states, Chef has cooked N meatballs, numbered 1 through N. No two meatballs contain the same amount of meat. You want to eat the meatiest meatball, i.e. the meatball with the maximum amount of meat. But you do not know which one it is, and Chef does not want to just give it to you. Therefore, he decided to play a game with you. You may ask Chef at most Q equals 4 plus N divided by 2 questions. In each question, you must give Chef the numbers of 5 distinct meatballs, and Chef tells you the numbers of the 3rd and 4th meatiest of the meatballs. In other words, the 3rd and 4th largest. Find the number of the meatiest meatball. And the constraints for this problem are going to be T, the number of test cases are between 1 and 1,000, and N, the number of meatballs for each test case are going to be between 6 and 100. So let's take a look at an example. So this is the example that Code Chef provided us with. You can see T at the top here is just going to be 1 for one test case. And this is a pretty simple example where it just gives us 6 meatballs. And the way that they want you to output your requests is to start it with a question mark and then give the indices of 5 different meatballs. And it will return you the indices of the uh, 2 meatballs that are the 3rd and 4th largest. So. Uh, in this example, basically the index matches the size of the meatball. So 6 is going to end up being the biggest meatball. And you can see that when you give it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because the indices match the size, uh, the grader tells you that index 3 and 4 are the 3rd and 4th largest meatballs. And if we do 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, it's 3 and 4. So you can see that these are all sorted, so it's always the 3rd and 4th number here that the grader is going to tell you. Uh, but in a more complicated example, obviously the indices will not match up with the sizes of the meatballs. And so somehow uh, the individual putting these requests in or the algorithm has been able to tease out that the largest or meatiest meatball of the six uh, is index number six. And so once you've discovered this, you have to output an exclamation mark and the index of the meatiest meatball. So how do we go about solving this problem. So there's sort of um, two steps to this, or this is the way that I approached it at least. Uh, the first step was sort of the second half of the algorithm, and it was trying to determine how the uh, individual or the algorithm teased out that 6 or index 6 was the largest meatball. So clearly uh, with only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 guesses here, uh, they were able to tell. So basically with this information that we're given right here, we should be able to somehow figure out which index is the meatiest meatball. And the first thing to notice is that um, on every single one of these lines, it's a different guess. So there's six meatballs and one meatball is missing from each guess. So I have highlighted that here. So index six is missing from the first guess, index five from the second guess, and so on and so forth. And uh, because 6 is our answer, we basically are going to want to find somehow to uh, basically use this missing index to figure out that it was the largest. Because based on the other indexes that we give and the responses, there should be some sort of pattern. And so the next thing I did was I looked at what are the frequencies of sort of the responses? What are the frequency of the third and fourth largest in terms of the indices? And we'll notice a pattern here that there's only three different indexes that we ever get and they all have a different frequency. So if we map it, we end up seeing that uh, index 3 shows up three times, index 4 shows up five times, and index 5 shows up four times. And if we try and pair this to uh, index 6 that we're looking for, we'll notice that it has uh, index 3 and 4, which happen to be um, the, the least frequent and the most frequent index that shows up. So if we can get our set of indexes or indices down to six and then uh, put in these six different requests where we alternate the index that is missing, then figure out the frequency uh, and then find what is the uh, least common index and most common index that we get back from the grader. We can then narrow it down to sort of two indexes or indices that are the largest. And so at this point, you know, the only two that have 
three and four, the least and most frequent index, are five and six. So how do we figure out which index is the meatiest? And there's only one other insight you need to make, and that's that any index that shows up as the third or fourth largest we know can't be the largest because there's always at least one or two meatballs that are larger than it. And it's always going to work out that the second largest uh, index will be one of these two. So we can basically just uh, first look up um, which of the indices match to our sort of least and most frequent indices that are returned by the greater, and then also check did that index ever show up as a third or fourth largest. And for the case of five, it will show up, but for the case of six, it never showed up here. So using those I guess multiple insights uh, based on these six guesses and what we get back from the grader, we can sort of tease out what is the uh, largest meatball. And the only other thing that we need to do is basically we need to reduce our uh, set down to six elements. But that's pretty easy. We can just create a set of um, the n starting indices and then give them five at a time and any time they give us back uh, the two that are the third and fourth largest we can just remove them and I think actually I glazed over one extra thing here which was showing that we don't actually need to store these uh, frequencies as pairs we can actually just add them up because they are always going to be unique and so when we add them you're always going to get a unique number so instead of looking for three comma four four comma five three comma five we can just add them together and we're always going to get seven eight and nine and this is just showing here that when we're searching for seven uh, it'll return you five and six and then like i said using that last insight that one of them will show up in the third and fourth, we take the other one. So this might have been a bit confusing because I've just been showing you a bunch of numbers. So let's actually walk through a different example uh, where also these aren't gonna have the same values here, the indices and the frequencies. So let's move on to that. So here is our walkthrough example. We're given one test case and we're given 10 meatballs. So the first thing to do, the first part of our algorithm is to create a set of the n indices and then reduce that to, so that there's only six meatballs left. So starting out, we're gonna have 10 with the indices one to 10. And the next thing we do is we need to uh, give a certain number of queries. And uh, that's gonna involve just taking the first five, outputting them, and then getting a response back from the grader. And the grader is going to tell us here that, um, in this example also implicitly, uh, we're making the same assumption that the index corresponds to the meatiness of the meatball. So in this case, the grader will tell us that index three and four are the third and fourth largest. So we then just remove those from our set, and then we make another query. So we take the first five once again, and we give that to the grader, and the grader is going to tell us that index three and four again, which correspond to uh, the, I guess, meatiness five and six here. They're the third and fourth largest, so we move those as well. And at this point, we now have a set of six elements. So we can move on to the second half of our algorithm. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to make our six different requests where we leave out one index at a time. So our first request is going to be two, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we leave out index one, and the grader is going to tell us eight and nine are the third and fourth largest. Uh, then we leave out two. We make the guess one, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then once again it tells us eight and nine. And we continue to do this so that we make all six of our guesses like we showed earlier. And at this point, we have all of these sort of frequencies of the indexes that or indices that were returned. So at this point, we make our little map uh, where we have the index index and the frequency. So here you can see they have different values. The seven shows up three times, the eight shows up five times, and the nine shows up four times. And what we needed to do earlier was basically store this index with the corresponding uh, added value. So we can basically delete all the red numbers here to store this in a vector or however you want to store it. And uh, now we're looking for the index indexes that map to the frequency that was the least frequent and the most frequent. So we're looking for 7 and 8 here and we can see that 9 and 10 are the ones that map to 7 and 8. So in our algorithm we're actually going to be searching for 15 not 7 and 8. And at this point we just need to check uh, which one of these numbers didn't show up as a third or fourth, third or fourth most uh, frequent, or, or third or fourth largest. And in this case, 9 did show up, so we know 10 is going to be the index of our medius meatball. So hopefully this makes sense, and uh, if not, hopefully walking through the code will uh, maybe clear it up a bit.
So here is our main C++ uh, function. It makes calls to other functions that we will walk through one by one, but it's, it's really straightforward. So we're reading in T the number of test cases and N the number of meatballs. And uh, for each test case T, uh, we're reading in N. Uh, sorry, so we read an n after we read in t in the inner loop. And then for the number of uh, meatballs n, we create a set, and it's going to start from 1. And then we reduce this set to only have 6 elements. And then once we have this, we call our algorithm find max, which sort of does those 6 uh, guesses and then teases out the max. And then once we have that, we just output the exclamation mark and the index. Uh, so let's one by one go through each of these functions. Create set, reduce set to 6, and find max. So here we have create set and reduce set to 6. So create set is pretty straightforward. We just have a set of integers, and we're going to loop through from i equal to the start value, which is 1, and then uh, such that i is less than start plus size, and then we're just going to insert this into set. And typically this is a log n operation, but there's actually an overloaded version of insert where you can give it a hint. And we know that because we're inserting these in increasing order, we can pass it uh, the pass the last element iterator, and it will always insert it at the back. So that's a neat little trick. And then we can just return s here. So pretty straightforward for creating our set, reducing the set to six, uh, what we basically do is we have a while loop in here, and while the size of the set is greater than 6, we call this function guess5, which basically guesses the first five elements of our set, and then it's going to return us a pair of integers, a and b, which we can get using our tie function. And then we just want to erase a and b from our set. So we always erase the first integer return, but if our size uh, after the first uh, erasure is equal to 6, we don't want to perform the, the second uh, erasing of the integer but in most cases except for the very last time we're going to be in, we're going to end up doing this and we're going to erase our a and b and so once you get your set size equal to 6 you'll be done this while loop and you can return so let's take a look quickly at this guess 5 function we're passing it uh, the iterator that we want to start guessing from so that's just the beginning of our set and if we come through here you can see this is templated it's a forward iterator we output our question mark and then we're just going to loop uh, five iterations while incrementing our iterator and then we just want to dereference the iterator and output that and then output end line to make sure that we're flushing our output so that this interactive problem works and uh, then the grader is going to send us two integers so we need to read those in and then just return that in the form of a pair and we're going to use this later in our find max function which is why we pulled this out uh, so moving on to the find max function so there's a lot going on here probably there's a cleaner way to do this um, Feel free to leave comments in the section, uh, comment section down below if you know of a cleaner way. Um, but let's just walk through it. So the first thing we're doing is we're passing, passing in our set, and then we're creating a vector of integers from that set, just because a vector at this point is going to be easier to work with. Then we create a map M, which is going to store the frequencies of the indexes or indices that the grader uh, returns to us based on our guesses. Then we have this set, which is just going to uh, store the three indices that uh, the grader returns us. Technically, these are going to be the keys in our map here, but uh, storing them in a set called out, sort of just they're ruled out, is going to make it easier for us to use them down below instead of trying to uh, iterate over the keys of our map here. And then we have our vector x which is by index going to store the uh, sum of the two indices that were returned by the grader for that index when it was left out. So then we have six guesses here in our for loop. Uh, we're calling our guess 5 again, and we're starting at the second element of our vector, and we're just doing that for simplicity's sake. You could do it um, from uh, the beginning and then use the last uh, in the last number to be the index that we're leaving out but I found this easier and so we return a and b and then we want to insert uh, these and do a post increment in our map that's storing the frequencies of these indexes that the grader returns and then make sure that we add the indices to our ruled out set so that we can tell between the final two which is the actual maximum and then here in our vector x we are adding uh, a and b together so that we can find uh, which of the indices corresponded to the indexes that were least frequent and most frequent. And uh, then we call a rotate here at the end. That's just going to basically take our 
uh, first element and put it at the back of our uh, vector. And when we've done that, um, we can then sort of go to our next guess by calling the same code. So it's a neat little use of rotate here. And once we've done that, we now have our map with all the frequencies of the indexes returned. We have the indexes in a set, and then we have the indexes indices that correspond to what the grader returned. Uh, and in our last few lines here, we have a lambda that compares. Uh, we're going to use this lambda as a comparator uh, to our min-max element algorithm, which we're going to pass our, our map to. And so what this is going to do is it's going to compare the key value pairs in our map by the uh, value in the key value pair. And so this is going to return us a pair of uh, key value pairs that represent the uh, minimum key value pair in terms of the value, in terms of the frequency of that index, and the maximum uh, key value pair in terms of the value. And uh, once we've done that, we can then just get sort of our target sum by adding p dot first arrow first and p dot second arrow first, and uh, at that point, all we have to do is loop through our vector x and check uh, does the sum that corresponds to the index that we left out equal t, and does it not exist in any of the indices that the grader returned us? And if so, we can just return uh, that value. And that is our full solution. So hopefully that made sense. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity of this problem. So if we go back uh, and take a look at each of our functions, the create set is going to have linear time complexity. It would be uh, n log n, but because we're using the hint, we're avoiding the log n, and it's just linear. Uh, the reduce set to 6, this one is going to be n log n uh, due to the fact that when we are doing our uh, finds on our set, they're going to have log n time complexity. Our guess 5, because it's bounded by a constant, is going to have constant time complexity. And our find max function is also going to have constant time complexity due to the fact that everything is bounded by the constant integer 6. Even creating the vector up here, we know the set here only has 6 elements. This uh, for loop is bounded by a constant, and this for loop down here is also bounded by a constant. So uh, if we go back to our um, final uh, sort of main function, this had linear time complexity, this had n log n time complexity, and this had uh, constant time complexity. So in total, our time complexity is going to be big O of t times n log n for the t test cases and the n log n of our reduced set to 6. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.